everyone, I'm Amy, this is my wife Maggie Hello. and together we are Thinker Thema and today we are doing a Kickstarter preview for the upcoming title from Leader Games called Arx. Now Arx is designed by Cole Worley and the art is by uh, Kyle Ferrin and this is all prototype though so everything that we're going to show you today is in prototype form including the components, some of the rules might be subject to change so please bear that in mind but we would love to tell you about our first thoughts of this game. So in ARCs, we find ourselves in the, the last days of a decaying empire in space, where we are all going to be playing as different factions, trying to protect our planets, expand ourselves as well, and ultimately be the one with the most power in the form of points by the end of the game. Now, at the heart of it, this game is a Forex game. And if you're not familiar with Forex, it stands for four X's. Um, the first one is you're going to be exploring. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to move your different units around this galaxy to try and discover new areas of this whole world. Um, and the reason why you want to do that is because of the second X. And the second X is exploit. You want to be uh, moving into these new planets and exploiting them or trying to extract their resources in order for you to do the third X, which is to expand. Now you really want to expand both your faction by adding units onto the board, but you also want to expand your buildings that are going to help you extract more resources and get those units out into different places. And finally, you want to exterminate. And exterminate is when you really need to battle with the opposing factions and make sure that you ultimately have control of more systems out in the galaxy. Now the really interesting thing about how you're going to get those four X's done is um, that this game actually relies on trick taking. So a very traditional card game type mechanism that's going to allow you to select the actions you get done and also the turn order or the way that people are going to be able to play out everything they want to get done on the board. So at the start of every round um, everyone's going to be dealt six cards and each of those six cards are going to be uh, played before the end of the round and what you get in your hand is a combination of suits which are going to allow you to um, select the action that you want to do um, as well as the numbers one to five and um, lower powered cards are, are going to allow you to get more actions done but higher powered cards are going to allow you to take initiative in this game which means to go first in the turn order or to lead the next trick. That becomes really important because there's always that tense trade-off of do I want to get more of that action done or do I want to make sure that I control the lead suit for the next round. But what is interesting about the trick taking in this game is even though I play a card which provides a lead suit, meaning that the person who plays the highest in that suit is going to go first in the next round, um, other players don't need to follow suit. In fact, they can play any card out of their hand and take the action, but it means that they only get to do that action once instead of um, hopefully being able to play a higher card than what I've played of the same suit and then be able to leverage the fact that they can do the action more than once. And the way that that's actually depicted on the cards is really cool because it's all done with illustrations. So you can see that this one gives me three of this type of action because there are three images depicted on here or icons depicted on here. This five, however, allows me to move or influence in the game. And you can see that I get to do it twice if I'm playing that and have the highest card in that lead suit. Now, there are so many other things going on in this game. Obviously, there is a degree of battling your opponents. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting in this game because the battling is very, very simple, but with some interesting decisions. So when you decide to take a battling action through the use of the cards and you play a battling action, you get to um, take on someone that's in the same system as you. And you're going to be battling them by choosing one of three sets of dice. And what's interesting about those sets of dice is that they have different levels of risk and likely damage that you're going to take, uh, as well as um, the 
the amount of damage that you're likely to attack the other player with. So you could kind of feel like, you know what, I'm not feeling great about this. I'm just going to take these these blue dice and these blue dice only have attack on them and, you know, I'm at no risk of being hurt. But they also have a lot of blank sides and so you might not actually get to damage mm. your opponent that much at yeah. all. Whereas you could go the very aggressive route and take these red dice and these red dice have far more attack icons on them but they also have a lot more damage icons on them as well. Mm. And then the orange dice are really interesting because these dice, when you can play them, actually allow you to steal resources um, of from your opponents instead of just damaging them. And that brings me on to another point, which is resources in this game. So you are going to be extracting resources from each of these planets and you need resources for a number of reasons in this game. The resources actually are in the form of cards in this game. So you can see we've got materials, we've got fuel, we've got weapons, many different cards that we can choose from. Now, these things are going to allow you to build out areas of your player board um, and on your player board, you're actually going to be able to unlock new types of buildings that have special effects that you can build out in areas um, where, uh, where you have control on the board. Um, but they also allow you to improve the performance of units that you already have available in mm. the game, as well as giving you um, many other ongoing benefits. And you need resources to get that done. You also need resources in order to build the buildings that you've already unlocked to go out onto the board. And the resources in and of themselves have powers. So for example, if you have a weapon, you can use this when you're attacking in battle to have extra dice going into that battle. Or for fuel, you can use that to move uh, one of your units on the board, ignoring some of the movement rules, which we'll come back to mm. later on. Um, and the materials are really excellent because they just act as a wild resource in this game, which means you can use them to build just about anything, which mm. is really great. But what's really interesting is that in this game, there's this side game going on over here, which is all about influence. So one of the actions you can take when you're um, playing the action selection is also to add influence to these five spaces on the right hand side of the board. The first one is going to really allow you to get more units out onto the board. The second one is going to allow you to extract from all of the planets where you have an extractor. Um, and then there are three acquire spaces relating to three cards that you can gain in order to hopefully um, have future benefits by building them out on your player board or they give you one-off really powerful abilities. So when you add influence here, you're taking cubes from your player supply and placing them where you want to almost bid in order to be able to be the player that gets to take these actions, which leads to a really tense side battle mm. of, well, how much influence do I have going on over there? Oh, yeah. Maggie's like now going to get that card and I really wanted mm. that card. So maybe I focus less on battling and more on this side influence game because that's mm. going to help me in the next round of the game. Um, on the other side of the board, you can see that we have objectives. And this is where the game really moves into strategy and away from battling tactics because in each round of this game, you are going to have two active objectives and they are really what's going to score you a lot of victory points, uh, whether you come first or second in that objective. Uh, but importantly, it also tells you what's coming up in the next hand. So you can get a little glimpse into the future of um, the objective that's upcoming, as well as an end game objective. So we know that that will score at the end of this particular mm. game. And everybody has a private objective yeah. that is selected at the start of the game as well. So there are a lot of things to keep your eye on in terms of different ways to make victory points in this game. But now let's talk about what we thought of the game because we'll be able to talk about some more of the nuance in each of the mechanics in All the right. game. Now the first thing is, if you're familiar with leader games and Cole Whirly, you're probably thinking this might be a complex game to learn. And we've had experiences with other games that have mm -hmm. been quite complex to learn. Yeah. This one, happy to say, has a very low rules yeah. overhead. Yeah, it yeah. makes it yeah, it's quite a, way easier to get into and kind of understand what's going on and get playing fairly quickly. Very yeah. quickly. I think you could get a player up and running with this game with um 
you, there's not too many fiddly rules or no. anything. It's no. it's very straightforward. I think as well, if you're familiar with trick taking, if you're mm. familiar with forex or at least area control, yeah. um, you're going to be able to understand what's happening in this yeah. game, um, it's, which makes it a pleasure to really learn and yeah. easier to get to the table. And I think ultimately, because it's so the yeah the rules are quite easy. It means that you can just start playing and actually spend all your energy, even in the first game, just looking at the strategy and going, okay, well, what do I want to do? Because it's only really like a handful of, of actions that you can do. So it's that whole, okay, well, let's start at looking at, you know, movement and let's start looking at, you know, am I going to start battling or am I going to try and build um, build buildings or whatever it is. And I think there's also a physicality that comes into it that makes it easier as well because mm. you are moving your units across the board. And yeah. so your actions are also limited by what's around you and what you're trying to get done because mm. you need to move into a space before you can battle someone. And yeah. so there is a nice progression of things that you're trying to do in this game. If you're familiar with Forex, you'll know that this style of game is highly, highly interactive. Yes. I mean, one of the X's is exterminate. And so you can see that you're going to be battling with your opponents. There's going to be limited spaces to be able to extract resources. A lot of the objectives or most of the objectives are related to area control in mm -hmm. some way. Yeah. So you are going to be moving around and trying to fight for your turf in yeah. this game or defend your turf because people are going to be um, spreading out and trying to come into your areas. Yeah. So, and yeah. so many of the objectives are around control, which is really just having the mo the majority of presence. Because mm. one of the things that's interesting with this is a lot of the games that we've been playing recently, it's like, oh, as soon as you know two of you are in an area, that triggers a battle. And it's like, well, no, here you can actually cohabitate and try and kind of outnumber one another to have control of that system. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only when you pay, play the aggression kind of action card that then you go, okay, let's go into a battle. Cool things with battle is, yeah, as you were mentioning, the different dice that you can that you can pick from uh, for for your battle. So I'm often I'm very risk averse. So I'll often go for these uh, the blue dice, but if, particularly if I have a lot of presence, I'm going okay. I don't want to take any damage, or I want to. Uh, but then often it's a very disappointing sort of ah. Uh, I only hit like the one <laughs> one hit, and so in this one it's really interesting because when you do one damage, um, a unit will just kind of be on the side, or if it's a building, it'll turn um, turn over to indicate that it's damaged. The second time that you hit them um, then they actually disappear from the map and at that point whenever you manage to to eliminate a unit or a building from the map uh, you're actually gonna you're gonna get a point for that which sounds tempting but I have found you should this game really rewards kind of going for more of those objectives which sometimes are going to be more around um, yeah like p positioning yourself potentially in in systems where there are no planets or it might be just ha having a position in uh, planets where there's it's actually other people's buildings that are that are there so yeah. it, it's a in those in those objectives change with every single round. So mm. you're constantly sort of shifting and changing the priorities of what you're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, I think definitely cool. felt like when battles were occurring in our games, it wasn't so much to chase victory points. It yeah. was definitely to achieve those objectives. And yeah. make no mistake about it, this game can be mean. Yes. And it can feel mean. Yes. It can feel mean because it's a Forex game and because you are trying to hold on to the little precious mm. area control yeah. that you have. And if someone is has got quite a runaway lead on a particular objective, that objective is going to score twice across two rounds because mm. they move through and um, they only move down once uh, in each round. And yeah. so each objective will be scored twice. So if someone gets a huge amount of points for an objective and they're going to score again the next round, it might be in all other opponents' best interest to... Yeah, they might get a target on their back. They might get a bit yeah. of a target on their back. Yeah. And so... Be warned that this game can feel a little bit mean, yes. um, but that is in the spirit of the game. Mm. Um, and, and with this uh, changing of objectives, mm. it is really nice because it does bring something new, yeah. something strategic to the game. Yeah. Um, but there are two things that I really, really love mechanically in this game that add a lot of layers mm. without adding a lot of rules overhead. The first one is to do with... Uh, movement in this game and mm. what happens when you don't control the area that you're trying to move um, in or out of because the way that it works for example in this system um, the yellow player here would have control of this system uh, because they have a building and two units and this white player only has one unit. Um, but that means that this white player can't actually move out of here because it's not so, it doesn't have control in an area where it's going to move into nor move out from. And mm. so you can really get your unit stuck 
stuck somewhere mm. um, if you're kind of isolated by yourself and other players Which, control that to system. Me, it actually makes a lot of like thematic sense. So so essentially, so you can only really move out, like move from an area if you have control in the area that you're leaving from or in the area that you're arriving to. To and to me, it's like okay, if I've got you know all my supporters here, it's like I'm gonna have the confidence to be like, yeah, great, let's go venture over there. Or if I'm like, Ugh, I don't know over here, but I know that my supporters are there to kind of help me out, I'm gonna be able to move there. If you're if you're coming from an area where you're by yourself and all of a sudden you've got you know Ugh, there's a lot of you know rival. Uh, presence over there I'm not going to I, there's no way I'm going there by myself so that makes sense unless I've got some extra fuel which then that's kind of like the resource that you can play that that breaks that um, you don't have to um, obey yes, that that right. movement that movement ban because yeah. then you can just go mechanically and with the gameplay it does mean that you have to think carefully about your movement in order not to isolate um, one of your units yeah um, or to move as a group in some instances to ensure that you're going to be able to get Mm. in and out of an area. That is really interesting and something that I personally haven't experienced in a game before, so Mm. I found that really fascinating. The second thing is really the trick-taking component of this game. And we see trick-taking elements in lots Mm. of different games, but what I found really interesting about this one is that distinction between higher cards that allow you to lead the next trick having fewer actions Mm. and lower cards like the ones that have more actions on them but are going to lose you the lead or Mm. initiative is what it's called in this game yeah that is really really interesting because it makes for some excruciating choices throughout this game I also didn't mention that instead of playing any one of the cards in your hand, you can play a card face down and copy the action of the lead suit. Mm. And that's interesting too, because sometimes you can be dealt a really, really bad hand and simply not have the action that you need to take in your cards which dictate Mm. your actions and so you are desperately waiting for the person who has initiative in this game to lead with the action that you have. Please do construction. I'm sitting on all these resources here. I'm ready to build and I just don't have any cards that will allow me to build for example. Yeah. If you read Cole Worley's design diaries uh, he talks about the fact that he wanted to give that feeling of making the best of a bad situation and certainly the luck of the draw of the cards really Mm. makes you feel that in a palpable way. You are you are waiting. You, it's like a celebratory moment when someone finally yeah, plays the you card. You the mercy to, of the elements to do of the, the action. Yeah. But there's also a lot to be said about looking at what's in your hand mm. and working out the order in which to play your cards because you really need to time when you want to be leading and when you don't because if you don't have an action that you need, you might not want to be leading the trick because you need someone else to lead with that suit, which makes for a really layered, interesting, strategic Mm. experience. Um, And as we expect from Cole Worley's game, it is just games it's just a really interesting dynamic that i haven't experienced before and when combined with forex it's just a really intriguing mix so why would you back this game um i think if you enjoy any of those mechanics of isolation so if you enjoy forex of course but if you enjoy area control if you enjoy trick taking and if you like a highly interactive experience then mm. this game might be something to check out. Mm. Um, if you don't like any of those things, <laughs> stay away. <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah, it might very, not be a yeah. game for you because those yeah. things, each of those elements are really pronounced yes. in this game. So it's difficult to ignore if you don't like area control. That's a big part of this game. Trick taking, mm. that's the main way you're going to get your actions done. Yeah. So you need to enjoy those types you need of to mechanisms. Also be very good at being reactive and kind of adapting halfway through the game because yeah those objectives are going to be changing with every single round so yes. it's not the kind of game that you're like okay i'm just gonna you know go into this one strategy and play that out um and, and then you know that because you're gonna then be missing out on the bulk of, mm. of points along the way yeah, yeah and interesting for a game that is in such flux it is a game that is a, a long experience not if you compare it to forex games traditionally yeah in but general, certainly genre, yeah. but certainly for the level of complexity and the rules overhead it is um, a slightly AP prone only because you're waiting for that first player to play mm. the lead card before you know what you want to achieve or what you're able to get done for that round. Yeah. And so that leads a little bit of time waiting for everybody to make their choice and mm. to play out their actions on the board. Yeah. So it is 
a, a longer experience. Um, we, of course, in the prototype have not played with the campaign mode. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that longer experience, I, I feel like will have greater reward if the build up that you're working through um, throughout the entire experience is then going to have some implications for the following yeah. game. Because the whole thing is like, I, I do love that all you all start with all the different factions are symmetric at the start. They all start with the same uh, power, same technologies. And it's as you're going through the game that you start uh, getting those those cards from the market and which are the yeah the t kind of new technologies and researching them which is what allows you to start uh, upgrading your board and upgrading essentially what you can do and even the types of buildings and units that you can use so the the idea again with that multi the multi game setup that kind of campaign setup is that those factions are going to remain become ongoingly like even more and more asymmetric mm -hmm. and then you can specialize on one thing or you can have that longer uh that longer term goal yeah and yeah. of course we don't know much about that so go and check no. that out on the kickstarter campaign um, but what we can say is that from the game as the prototype, as we've tested it, this is a very layered experience, but one that is only for three or four players. Mm -hmm. So please bear that in mind. Yeah. You need to have a player group of three or four in order to enjoy mm. this game. Um, we really did enjoy it at three and yeah. four, but um, it's it doesn't differ too much at those player counts, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. Um, of course, people are going to find that quite restrictive, um, but that was, yeah. a, again, a design choice about the optimal play for mm -hmm. this game and with the trick taking element being the way that it is and um, you can kind of see why yeah. it's recommended for those player counts yeah. um, anyway we hope you enjoyed this preview and learned a little bit more about this game and whether it might be right for you to back or not if you've enjoyed this video please hit like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll be back with more board game reviews soon but otherwise bye for now bye